In this lecture, we will cover test execution activities. Test execution is the sixth activity in the test process. In the previous lecture, we saw during test execution, test suits are run in accordance with the test execution schedule. Now we will cover eight major activities of test execution, as mentioned in the ISTQB syllabus. The first activity is recording the IDs and versions of the test item or test object, test tools, and testware. The second activity is executing tests either manually or by using test execution tools. The third activity is comparing actual results with expected results. The fourth activity is analyzing anomalies to establish their likely causes. The fifth main activity is reporting defects based on the failures observed. The sixth main activity is logging the outcome of test execution. The seventh main activity is repeating test activities either as a result of action taken for an anomaly or as part of the planned testing. The eighth main activity is verifying and updating bidirectional traceability between the test bases, test conditions, test cases, test procedures, and test results. Now let's understand each of these test activities one by one. The first activity is recording the IDs and versions of the test item or test object, test tools, and testware. As we know, during test execution, we establish the test environment. And the test environment includes different hardware and software. During test execution, we need to record their version number so that in future, we can use them for reproducing issues. Remember the first activity is recording the IDs and versions of the test item or test object, test tool, and test where. The second activity is executing tests either manually or by using test execution tools. This point is quite simple. If you developed a test procedure during the test implementation stage, you are going to execute them manually. But if you have developed test scripts during the test implementation stage, you will use a test automation tool for execution. So, the second activity of test execution is executing tests either manually or by using test execution tools. The third activity is comparing actual results with expected results. Let's understand this concept. During testing, the test cases are executed with the help of a test execution tool. And during test execution, the measured result is obtained. This measured data is then compared with the expected result. If the measured data is the same as expected data, we say test cases are passed. But if the measured data is not the same as expected data, we say test cases are failed. This is the third activity of test execution, comparing actual results with the expected results. The fourth activity is analyzing anomalies to establish their likely causes. Previously, we saw the test cases are executed and the measured result is compared with the expected result. During test execution, we run many such test cases and as a result, we get many results. The obtained result is analyzed and the reason for the failure is recorded. This is what the fourth activity states analyzing anomalies to establish their likely causes. The fifth main activity is reporting defects based on the failures observed. In the test execution stage, we prepare the defect report. For example, list of test cases failed, reason for failure, which requirement failed, impact of the failure. Information on the defect report varies from project to project. But what you need to remember is, the fifth main activity is reporting defects based on the failures observed. 
The sixth main activity is logging the outcome of test execution. During test execution, we also log the outcomes of the test execution. For example, how many tests passed? How many failed? How many tests didn't run? Several tests not applicable for this release, and so on. The sixth main activity is logging the outcome of test execution. The seventh main activity is repeating test activities either as a result of action taken for an anomaly or as part of the planned testing. Here, based on the defect report or defect analysis, we think that few tests failed because of the test setup issue, then we may have to update the test setup and re-execute the tests. This is all about seventh activity repeating test activities either as a result of action taken for an anomaly or as part of the planned testing. The eighth main activity is verifying and updating bidirectional traceability between the test bases, test conditions, test cases, test procedures, and test results. In the test execution stage, we get test results for the low-level test cases. Therefore, at this stage, we link test reports with test scripts. With this, we established bidirectional traceability between the test basis, test conditions, test cases, test procedures, and test results, which is the eighth activity. Now let's summarize all the points which we discussed until now. Recording the IDs and versions of the test items or test object, test tool, and testware. Executing tests either manually or by using test execution tools. Comparing actual results with expected results. Analyzing anomalies to establish their likely causes. Reporting defects based on the failures observed. Logging the outcome of test execution, for example, pass, fail, blocked. Repeating test activities either as a result of action taken for an anomaly or as part of the planned testing. Verifying and updating bidirectional traceability between the test bases, test conditions, test cases, test procedures, and test results.